of us to see in detail. I'm Chris. This is MMA for you. Uh, I'm going to be doing my prediction for UFC Fight Night 34, Safadine versus Lim, which happens on uh, January 4th on the UFC Fight Pass. Um, the thing with the Fight Pass, I guess I'm going to actually shill the UFC here, but they are giving the Fight Pass away for free for two months. You can cancel any time, but um, you do have to put your credit card on file. But you, technically speaking, you do get this if you do it like now or like any time before the fight. I think they'll replay it too. Um, you can pretty much get this event for free. Shill in the pass. Uh, I don't work for Zufa or anything, but uh, just want to tell you guys if you want to see this fight night for free, you can. Um. As far as this fight night goes, man, there are some a lot of UFC newcomers. I mean, seriously, it, it is just full of just like some guys that honestly probably aren't UFC level. Um, some guys that are some pretty good prospects. Uh, you, you can definitely tell they're just this card is for the purpose of global expansion a lot of asian fighters i mean it, it's kind of crazy to see that in a sense it makes me curious to see who's going to rise up in the ranks and, and be a quality fighter um they also have the first filipino national and david scarecrow galera he's fighting a royston uh we who if i'm not mistaken is like a singapore national because they're gonna have fun in singapore if I'm not mistaken, or, or maybe a Chinese that, or, or something like that, um, geez, I should have checked, actually, <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, um, the main event was supposed to be Tarek Safdin versus Jake Allenberger, now it's Hungi Lim versus Tarek Safdin, which is actually not for striking, it, you know, both these guys are primary strikers, it's actually not a bad matchup, um, Kawajiri's fighting and the co-main, so that's pretty cool. Got some familiar names like Max Holloway, Dustin Kamara, Kung Hyo Kang, who's fond of UFC, you know, so yeah, let's get started. Tarek Safadine fights Hyung Gyu Lim. Well, Hyung Gyu Lim has a 12-3 and record with one draw, nine wins by K or Tiko, two wins by Sub. He also has two losses by submission. He's 28 years old on a seven-fight win streak. One thing to note, he is 6'3 and big for 170, training out at the Korean top team. He has some really strong knees, which he used to beat, uh, was it Marcel Guamez, if I'm not mistaken? And, um, is it Pascal Kraus, if I'm also not mistaken, as well? He's heavy handed, got some good stand up, always pushing forward. His cardio, though, um, is something that's questionable. I mean, I didn't see the greatest cardio from him when he fought Marcelo Gomez, uh, in his, but it was his first fight in the UFC, so you never know about the Galactagon jitters or whatnot. But also being so big for the weight class, I, I would, I would assume that that uh, type of cut will affect his cardio and, and also the pace that he generally employs in his fights. Don't exactly speak well for uh, cardio. Could be wrong though, you know, maybe it's just something I saw in his first fight and something that may not actually be a concern. Um, but yeah, you know, we'll see. Guy's also quite a potent finisher as well, you know. Only one of his wins went to decision. Only one of his, uh, you know, so uh, potent finisher as well. Tarek Safdane, 14-3 and three record. One win by KO, five wins by Sub. He's 27 years old on a four-fight win streak. He compared to uh, Hungi Lim's 6-3. Tarek Safdin is 5-9. Trains out of Team Quest. He is the final Strike Force welterweight champion, beating uh, Nate Marquardt. He has some strong technical kickboxing, really good leg kicks as he showed against Marquardt. And overall good defense, a guy you generally don't see getting hit clean. The only time I remember really seeing him get clean was against, uh, what, like Tyler Stinson. Um, his takedown defense is really good, too. You can see it against, uh, like, Tyron Woodley. I mean, he had a hard time taking him down. 
Um, and then he was hard to keep down as well. Uh, I know Marquardt went from some takedowns, and Safdie just stuffed all those. But Zane Jiu Jitsu is actually pretty solid. Um, one that I like Safdie a lot. I, I'm actually a big fan of his. Uh, I think he's a great technician. He's a very workmanlike and a very smart fighter, which works for and against him because it works against him in the sense that he's not much of a finisher. Most of his finish, except against, uh, what is it, like Nate James or something like that in Strike Force. Um, but most of his finishes tend to be in like the regional scene. Um, he, he's not much of a finisher. Um, he's not what I'd call a point fighter per se either. It, it's just that, um, well, if, if he wants like the Stinson fight, I mean, he's definitely trying to point fight there, you know. It, he go for takedowns and do pretty much stay busy ground and pound. Against Marquardt, I mean, he was going for the leg kick primarily, which worked to great effect. But it wasn't effective for finishing. That's the thing. So, in a sense, he's a smart fighter in that he'll do what he needs to do to win and work certain game plans and keep with those game plans in order to win. Um, the, once again, the only problem is his finishing ability isn't that great. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, regardless of all that, I think Tarek Safdie takes this. It's a, it is a tough fight because Hung Yu Lim is pushing forward and he's got some really heavy strikes. He's got to watch out for his knees and he's just really big for the weight class. Like I said, Safdie tends to be a pretty smart fighter, pretty good defensively. Um, he's definitely a guy that if he can do a one-two leg kick or something and just do that throughout the whole fight, he'll do that. And that's just, you know, like I said, he's more of a workman-like and more smart fighter than, um, you know, he's not like this crazy showman or anything like that. Very workman-like, uh, more of a game plan type fighter. Gotta go with Tarek Safadine to win this one. Okay, next fight after that, Tatsuya Kawajiri fights uh, Sean Soriano. So, uh, you know, I actually did do some research on uh, some of these guys. It's hard to find a lot of these guys' fights, but uh, I was actually impressed with Sean Soriano in his last fight against a guy named, uh, last name of Brito. It was in, it was in a CFA. 8-0, you know, Seriano's got an 8-0 undefeated record. Three wins by KRTK, three wins by Sub. 24 years old, training out of the Black Zillions. Stand-up was pretty solid. Uh, he had good knees, really good kicks. Um, and uh, actually, his takedown ability wasn't that bad. Uh, he actually showed some good ground and pound and, and a pretty active top game um, overall when he was on top. I mean, he'd actually get mount on Brito a lot of times. Brito was really good at getting a leg lock kicking his legs up, and actually getting in a leg lock position to get out of mount. Uh, otherwise, uh, I was actually impressed with what I saw from Seriano. However, he is fighting crusher uh, Tatsuya Kawajiri. He's a veteran of 32 wins, 7 losses, and 2 draws. 12 wins by K.O. Tiko, 9 wins by Sub. He also has 2 losses by K.O. Tiko, and 3 losses by Sub. He's 35 years old on a 5 fight win streak. Something to know about that win streak too is a, a lot of those wins are at featherweight. You know, he it was uh, his cut to featherweight has, has proven to be uh, a good one. Uh, it's, it's definitely uh, you know it, he's on a win streak uh, now at featherweight, and he has some really strong wrestling and good top control. Uh, his ground and pound is really strong, and, and he will look to actively pass guard. Uh, doing like pound to pass, you know, you'll uh, ground and pound and use that to open up uh, stuff to pass guard and whatnot. You watch his fight against uh, Josh Thompson. I mean, man, I mean, he just take down, pass to mount. I mean, all ground and pound, pass to mount all day. I mean, it was just, it was crazy seeing Thompson uh, pretty, you know, it was a pretty dominant victory over a, a good you know, a good opponent. His stand-up's actually not too bad either. Um, I don't see it too much. Uh, he does hit hard. 
Um, I remember seeing his war with, uh, I think it was Eddie Alvarez. That was really cool. You got to see a lot of his stand-up there. Um, so it, it, it's definitely not bad, but his strength really is in wrestling, top control, uh, getting into dominant positions and whatnot. Uh, both of these guys, it's their first fight in the UFC. I think uh, Kawajiri, though, just has way too much experience. Um, really good wrestling. Uh, despite his age, his fighting style, especially when he employs more wrestling and grappling, uh, lends itself to longevity. I mean, he has been in, like I said, the Alvarez fight was kind of a war. Um, but for the most part, he's definitely not what I'd say in his prime, but his style works um, almost regardless of age, really. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll go with... Uh, I think uh, Seriano, though, like I said, I was impressed with what I saw. Still pretty young, trains at a good camp. Um, I think he could definitely surprise people here, you know. Uh, I, I think he, he could have a good showing, but I think Kawajiri just might be a little too much for him. So I'll go with Tatsuya Kawajiri for the win here. Next fight after that, Keichi Kunimoto fights Luis Dutra. You know, uh, I hate this. I, I tried to find some Kunimoto fights, and I couldn't find any. You know, he has a 15 and five record, two with two draws and one no contest. Two wins by KO Tikio, eight wins by Sub. He's 32 years old on a four fight win streak, and it's his first fight in the UFC. Well, I, I you know, eight wins by Sub kind of indicates something about his ground game being pretty good. Uh, Luis Dutra, uh, he was an uh, tough Brazil 2, if I'm not mistaken, is it 2 or 1? Um, 2, my bad, yeah. He was on Team Nogueras. Uh, but I think he got some sort of injury or something I had to pull out of uh, that season. 11-2 and two record with uh, 1 draw, 3 wins by KO Tico, 3 wins by Sub. He's 31 years old on a 4 fight win streak. Training at a rental Vacal. Um... I got to see like one fight of his. I noticed his stand-up's pretty wild. I mean, he, he throws some pretty looping punches. Um, to really get in, uh, he, he will utilize. I, I remember seeing him utilize some pretty good, ta decent takedowns. A lot of them would seem like trips from the clinch. And, and his ground game looked pretty solid as well. Uh, it's his first fight in the UFC. But I'll go with Luis Dutra to win this one. Okay, next fight after that, Kyung Ho Kang fights uh, Shinichi Shimizu. Well, Kyung Ho Kang has an 11 and 7 record with one no contest, two wins by KR Tiko, eight wins by Sub. He's 26 years old. He's got some good wrestling. He's really strong in the scrambles. If he's on the bottom, he'll find his way to the, uh, to top position. Um, he is good off his back as well. Generally at, at sweeps. Um, you know, offensively, there's something to be a little more desired. Um, so far from what I've seen in the UFC against like Caceres and uh, uh, geez, I've got uh, who's the other guy he fought that he lost to? He barely lost to. He's a Rufus Sports guy. Uh, Chico Camus, Chico Camus, yeah, and he was actually really close to winning uh, against Chico Camus in my decision. And, and, and my opinion, it, until he got up kicked and almost just got knocked out. Uh, Shimizu has a 28 and 8 record with 10 draws, four wins by KO Tikio, 19 wins by Sub. That's has three losses by submission. 20 years old on a five fight win streak. He has some strong Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and he's definitely willing to try unorthodox techniques. I mean, this is a guy that will try flying submissions. Um, at the expense of losing position, and it's his first fight in the UFC. I can see stylistically uh, Kyung Ho Kang being more of a top control grappler in this fight with Shimizu, trying to work from the bottom, but being relatively unsuccessful. He'll definitely go for things, but I can see Kang defending mainly from top, so I'll, I'll go with Kyung Ho Kang to win this one. And next fight is that Katsunori Kikuno fights Quinn Mulhern. Sounds really interesting because Quinn Mulhern is cutting down to 155. 
Um, he used to fight primarily as a welterweight. He lost to Rick Story in his last fight, if I'm not mistaken. 18 and 3 record, 3 wins by KRTK, 11 wins by sub. He's 29 years old. The guy is tall and lanky. He's 6'3. He's got some strong Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He's good off his back, but where he really thrives, in my opinion, with his Jiu Jitsu is in the scrambles. He's really good at scrambling. Striking uh, has a lot to be desired. He's not super athletic, so one of the things about him is that, like, he's not, like, the greatest wrestler because he's not super athletic you know he doesn't have like this crazy takedown game or anything like that um Kikino 21 and 5 record with 2 draws 12 wins by KRT 2 wins by sub he's 32 years old on a 5 fight win streak he has a karate style stand up he's really good with uh, kicks especially kicks to the body and this is his first fight in the UFC. And one thing that's also notable about Kakuno is that he uses crescent kicks as well. That's pretty tough for me to call because, you know, if it hits the ground, I, I favor Mulhern to win this one. I think Kakuno's probably going to have the edge in the striking. And like I said, I, I don't know if Mulhern will be able to easily take Kakuno down to the mat. Might be the bigger fighter here, though, too, because that's also another thing, too. It's not just uh, Kikuno's first fight in the UFC, but uh, Asian fighters, especially uh, Japanese fighters, are known not to cut a lot of weight. So, you know, and you have a guy that used to fight at Walter Weight, who's 6'3", he's cutting to um, lightweight. So, you know, Mohan might just be the much bigger fighter here, too. I I'm not too sure. Um, regardless, I think Kikuno has a better stand up here. I think he can win. Uh, through the superior stand-up. Okay, next fight after that, John Delos Reyes fights Dustin Kamara. I honestly couldn't find anything about uh, with uh, John Delos Reyes, actually. I know he has a 7-2 record, 3 wins by KRTK, 4 wins by Sub. He's 26 years old on a 4-fight win streak. He is a finisher. It's his first fight in the UFC. Dustin Kamara, 10-1 record, 2 wins by KRTK, 7 wins by Sub. Um, he's 24 years old, trains out of Gracie Technics along with uh, Max Holloway. His Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is solid. Um, he's good off his back. Stand up's improving. He actually didn't look too bad in the stand up against uh, Mitch Gagnon until Gagnon cracked him <laughs> and subsequently submitted him. Um, otherwise, uh, I'm actually. I like what I see from Kamara. You know, good ground game, improving stand up. Uh, you know, I'll go with Dustin Kamara to win this one. Next fight after that, the world's tallest featherweight, Will Chope, fights Max Holloway. Well, Will Chope is 100, he fights at 145 pounds, and he's 6 foot 4. I mean, and the thing is, he's not like super drawn out or anything like that either, you know. Um, he has a 19 and 5 record, 4 wins by KRTK, 12 wins by sub. He has 2 losses by KRTK and 3 losses by sub, 23 years old. On a 14 fight win streak. Max Holloway, 7 and 3 record with 2 wins by KO Tico, 5 wins by decision, 22 years old. He's actually, at 5'11, he's actually one of the taller featherweights, but Chope has uh, got a lot of height on him. He's on a 2 fight losing streak uh, against Dustin Bermude, or Dennis Bermudez. I thought he won that fight, to be perfectly honest with you. And then he lost to Conor McGregor. Um, so, I mean, even, let's just say, like, the Bermudez w loss wasn't controversial. And I know a lot of people that actually agree that um, Holloway won, should have won. Uh, those are actually two respectable losses. Um, and actually his third loss is to Dustin Poirier in his first um, fight in the UFC. So, all those losses are to generally, genuinely, like, good competition. Trains at Gracie Technics. He has good technical kickboxing. Uh, good composure. You know, he's not a guy that will, like, he smells blood and then he's just going to go wild or something like that. He uses body punches really well. His takedown defense is solid. And his overall grappling is improving. Um, I know that Chope is a taller fighter. Uh, and Holloway generally likes to use his superior uh, 
uh, range and, and height and reach in a lot of his fights. Nonetheless, I think that Max Holloway is still the more technical uh, kickboxer here. Um, I, I think he should. He, he also strikes in combination, which I like. I think he'll be able to get inside, find his range eventually, and, and um, use his kickboxing uh, to get a win here. Okay, next fight after that, David Scarecrow Galera fights Royston Ye Wee. This is a really interesting fight in the sense that we, I mean, looking at his resume, I mean, he's just not a UFC caliber fighter. 2 0 undefeated record, both wins by sub. He's 27 years old, never been past the first round. It should note, like, his level of competition was really weak. I don't even know if to add winning records. Um, like I said, um, and he's uh, last fought in December 2011. It's his first fight in the UFC. Think he's a Singapore national? I'm not too sure. David Scarecrow Galera, he's the first Filipino national to fight in the UFC. They have Filipino Americans that fight in the UFC, but not like straight from Philippines Filipino nationals. Um, so David Galera, five and zero undefeated record, two wins by KO Tigo, three wins by Sub. Trains at uh, the Philippines' uh, top MMA gym in Team Lakai Wushu. He is a finisher. He's only been out of the first round once. And it's his first fight in the UFC. I'll go David Scarecrow Galera to win this one. Next fight after that, Tai Hoon Bang fights Marbek uh, Taisumov. Well, Bang has a 16 and 7 record, 8 wins by KO Tiko, 8 wins by decision. Has has 2 losses by sub, 30 years old, training at a Korean top team. He's got some heavy hands, good stand-up, and a really strong chin. It's his first fight in the UFC. Mark Beck uh, Tysimov has a 20-4 and record with 10 wins by KRTK, 9 wins by sub, 25 years old on a 3-fight win streak. He is a finisher. Um, I remember watching uh, one of his fights at M1. Uh, you know, some, he has some really good takedowns. I liked his ground and pound as well. Uh... Push a really good pace on his opponent as well as always kind of pushing forward. It's his first fight in the UFC. Bang, I mean, he does have uh, some really good stand up, but I, I gotta go with Marabek uh, Tysimov to uh, get the win here. I think he can get the fight to the ground and work his uh, superior ground game on Bang. And finally, Russell Dunn fights Landro Issa. Well, Lander Issa has an 11-3 record with one win by Tikio, seven wins by Sub. He also has two losses by KO Tikio. Training out of Evolve MMA. It's his first fight in the UFC. He's got some uh, good Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. The, the thing with Issa, you know, my thing with Issa is if he can't get the fight to the ground, and I think he might have a hard time doing that, I just don't see his avenue to winning this one. Russell Down has a 12-3 record. Six wins by KO Tico, four wins by Sub. He does have two losses by Sub. He's got some heavy hands, and um, you know, it's his first fight in the UFC. Some decent wrestling as well. Um, you know, I just got to go with Russell Dunn to win this one. I think he can keep the fight standing and uh, beat Issa in the stand-up. Okay, uh, to recap, I have Tarek Safadine over Hung Yu Lim. Uh, Tatsuya Kawajiri beating Sean Soriano. Luis Dutra beating Keiichi Kunimoto, Kyung Hao Kang beating Sh Shinichi Shimizu, Katsunori Kikuno over Quinn Mulhern, Dustin Kamara over John De Los Reyes, Max Holloway over Will Chope, David Scarecrow Galera beating Royston Wee, Marbek Tysimov beating Tai Hoon Bang, and Russell Down over Leandro Issa. So that's it for my predictions for UFC Fight Night 34, Safadine vs. Lim. If you have any comments, just leave them below. And that's it for MMA for you. Thank you guys very much.